Jack Donovan, good morning. Good morning. Excellent to see you again. How are things in uh, in Oregon? Oh, everything's doing great. I actually just uh, bought, bought some land a few weeks ago. Well, a few months ago now. And uh, we've been building all kinds of things on the land. And that's that's kind of what I'm really excited about right now. Oh, excellent. You'll tell us. I believe today you had uh, an eclipse? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just that I wasn't in the full zone, so I didn't see very much at all. It was kind of a non-event for me. And, you know, the thing about mass events is that uh, it's just a big traffic jam. It's like celebrating Halloween when everybody celebrates Halloween. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to not do it, you know. <laughs> I want to have my own important moments. <laughs> Good. Well, celestial events can be can be fun if you catch them, but uh, in the wild, yeah. not in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, uh, we're very happy that your uh, uh, new book, at least in France, is coming out, translated in French, The Way of Eagle. Uh, no, the not The Way of Man, The, the <laughs> Sky Without Eagle. I'm going to write that next. <laughs> exactly, The Way of the Eagle. And um, so in French, it will be Un ciel sans aigle. Nice. So we're, uh, we're looking, uh, I'm looking forward to, of course, I've read the English version. I'm looking forward to read the, the, the French one. So um, can you tell us a little bit about that book? Well, uh, that book actually is a collection of kind of my best essays uh, from a certain period. I forget when the period actually ends. I would say probably about 2015, maybe, 2014. Um, And uh, so, you know, that's, uh, it's a collection of kind of my best work uh, that I put out there. And then there are a few new essays that aren't uh, online anywhere. Uh, there's an essay, there, there's an essay about crom, I think. Yes. Uh, you and I both like that kind of stuff and uh, uh, a little bit of Conan stuff. And then uh, uh, there's uh, kind of an essay on brotherhood, like what my version of the perfect society would be, um, which wasn't included in anything online. Uh, so that was kind of a little bit different. Uh, there's a, an essay called The Manly Barbarian uh, that I liked a lot. Uh, it kind of informed a lot of my work. I think it's based on uh, Thorstein Veblen uh, and his uh, uh, what is it, uh, the philosophy of the leisure class. Leisure class, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting essays that, I, that, I, that I'm proud of uh, from you know, my past. So, uh, I mean, obviously, it's nothing that I've written uh, super recently. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's some of my best work. I think they're still relevant, uh, and judging from the success that you have in France and internationally, of course, with uh, the way of men, these essays build up on it and and explain a little bit how you you know once you explain what is the the way of the gang, the way of uh, honor, strength, uh, all these four virtues that you explain in the way of men, these essays build on that. And actually, going to many directions. Which 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 one gave the title to to the book? Which is, I think, was very interesting. Oh, well, it was a speech I gave uh, at a time at, yeah, many years ago, um, and uh, yeah, it was just an idea that uh, that there's nothing to look up to in our societies. I mean, uh, you know, people uh, greatness is kind of being torn down, and. Uh, You know, we don't, uh, you know, elevate like great men, you know, in the way that we used to and with great you know, statues. And uh, this is the man who did something amazing. You know, it's a, a lot more about a victim culture. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I'd rather have, you know, I'd rather be led by men who are great. And, uh, you know, despite all their flaws, because they always have flaws. Everybody has flaws, right? But, uh, you know, I'd rather be around uh, great men who are flawed than, uh, this kind of culture of just nitpicking away at everyone and uh, trying to find, uh, you know, gossiping about everyone and so forth. Uh, so, you know, just uh, about uh, yearning for greatness, I think. So you're not a special snowflake? I, I, I probably am a special <laughs> snowflake in some way, but uh, you know, I, I don't have hurt feelings uh, about, about everything. It seems that um, when, you, when you say that the... There's no more eagles in the sky. It's an interesting metaphor for not only the lack of leadership, but the lack of potential for each one of us to ever become an eagle. Because, you know, there's, there's no one teaching us uh, greatness. There's, uh, there's no more culture of, uh, of um, looking up to great people and emulate them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's, it's, you know, like I said, everything is more looking down. 
How do you, know, you this come to that? I've been thinking, talking about a lot lately, not necessarily in this in this book, but uh, kind of where I've been going dry. recently. I've been uh, kind of reinvestigating a lot of Nietzsche, and you know everything is so nakedly the uh, kind of master slave morality turned upside down. Uh, the whole transvaluation of values, and it, it's like it, it, all. It's like he foresaw where we are right now in terms of the worship of weakness and, and of slave values and, and uh, these people turning everything upside down. Like if you're strong, you're a bad person. If you're, uh, you know, if you're powerful, you're a bad person. If you're rich, you're a bad person. Uh, you know, if, you, you know, if you say no to anyone ever, you're a bad person. Um, you know, if you make your, basically, if you make your own values, you're a bad person. You, everybody has to be the same and equal and accepted in every way, no matter what they do or how bad, yeah, how like inadequate they are. And uh, you know, I think that, that that does fold back into this idea of uh, you know wanting there to be eagles in the sky. How how do we how do we come to that? Because our Western society, you live in the U.S., we obviously had wars in Europe, but. U.S. was massively leading, was winning, the, even won the Cold War. How did, it, how did we come to that? How did we fall from so high, from the sky? I think it's just been a slow creep for a long time. You know, like I said, I mean, uh, I mean Nietzsche was writing about the same thing, uh, you know, like, you know, uh, 150 years ago or whatever. And uh, it's, I mean, he saw it coming. It was a slow, I, I think the Industrial Revolution had a lot to do with it. And the kind of democratization of work, and everybody can do everything really. I um, mean, you know, except for you know some STEM field things, and and uh, you know I think that uh, it's just been a long, slow decline of of, of letting people's grievances uh, become more important than their strengths. Yeah, it's um, it's something that we have seen uh, recently. I think the in the U.S. Uh, maybe you would like to comment. Um, the campus uh, life seems to not to not to be about achievement anymore, but uh, some sort of weird, um, as you said, men victim mentality and complain about everything possible, everything imaginable. Yeah, and I guess that maybe that started in, I mean, I don't know how, if it was always like that, or maybe it started in full force in the 60s or whatever, because, you know, you had all those campus, you know, the whole purpose of going to school was to rebel all of a sudden instead of to learn something. And uh, to organize and, and so forth. And it's, it's a, obviously young people are easily, they don't think they're easily manipulated, but they are. Because uh, they don't have a lot of life experience to be like, actually, that doesn't work. You know, uh, but, uh, you know, so they're, they're easy to manipulate and move around. And uh, so if you get somebody uh, charismatic, you can kind of, uh, you know, program them. And it's, what's strange is that uh, they think that they're going to school now to learn critical thinking skills, but they actually repeat their exact arguments of the professors. They're actually being indoctrinated as, as if they were going to church. Yes. You know, and, and Jim Goad had a, a, you know, Jim, Jim Goad and Mike have both been calling uh, social justice warriors, uh, you know, church ladies. Because they are. They're easily offended. If, if anyone says anything that's it's, it's bad, it's, it's like you said, a bad word. You know, it's like they can't hear words they don't like. Uh, you know, and that's kind of uh, ridiculous. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of words. And that's, that's the really scary thing about our society mm -hmm. now is, is that people are... Uh, equating words with violence to the uh, to the point where anyone who says anything they don't like is somehow hurting them, <laughs> uh, which I think is bizarre. But uh, people have been taught that that's a reasonable thing to say, and uh, that's it's it's really disturbing. Now, the common people, people like you and me, people who work for a living, um, how do they see this? Because Obviously, you know, most women will still like uh, strong and powerful men. Uh, natural hierarchy does exist. And within businesses, well, it's not really a democracy unless there are some new uh, roles such as uh, um, diversity managers and things like that that start to emerge. But um, companies who are politically correct don't focus on business and therefore die. So... Yeah. How, how do pe common people see all these things? Well, I mean, I think a lot of people obviously just shake their heads and, uh, and uh, just have to... I mean, you still have to make a living. So they just kind of accept as much of it as they have to. People know the right words to say. Them. And what's sad is that uh, because people are so afraid of words, 
Um, and so afraid of being put in a box of being called like a racist or a sexist or, or becoming unemployable really for that reason, you have people that just lie, you know, like, uh, it's, they, it's like Patrick Bateman, uh, from American psycho, you know, they talk about all the causes that you're supposed to care about, but they don't care about any of them. You know, they're just, uh, people just lie to themselves because, you know, you have to get through, you know, everyday life. I think that most people realize on some level that something's wrong. But uh, I think that the, in reality, they don't want to shoot themselves in the foot. You have to, you know, in, in many ways, I think that they convince themselves of whatever uh, people say they're supposed to say. It's easier to believe that the lie is true. You know, it makes it's more comforting than uh, because then, you know, it's just, it's uh, then you get in this thing where you, the world is upside down is kind of which is, you know, kind of the topic I've been developing and that. Uh, yeah, the world is upside down, so what do you do? I mean, then you're just angry about it all the time. And uh, so it's easier to just accept it and, and say, you know what? This crazy shit that they've been telling me, it, it must have some merit, you know? Uh, it's like, uh, I, talking about college life, I, I signed up to take a German class uh, just because I wanted to learn. Uh, I need, felt like I needed a little structure. And, uh, I, and yeah, there were like eight genders that I had to choose from as and, <laughs> Uh, I was like, this is real. And this is like a, this is like a, a redneck community college in the middle of nowhere. Not like a, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, some, you know, like, not like Portland State University or someplace where you would expect that to be. But like, I guess all schools are like that now. And it's, it's really bizarre. But if you, if you check, if you check the right boxes, you can add extra points. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's definitely a point system. It's a the victim scale. You should also choose the race uh, pretty well. You must oh, yeah, say you're yeah, black, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, an extra yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, on the on the leadership front, uh, obviously the people who pretend in this uh, sort of dystopian Soviet Union uh, that is turning that the West has turned into, um, the leadership uh, obviously uh, seems to be also uh, more like a dove without feathers than an eagle. But obviously, the eagle there was one at least pretending to be an eagle your current president, Donald Trump, who got elected by a majority of people or end states um, that actually seems to vote in a, not exactly the way that they behave in the in day-to-day -day life, as you said, pretending and so on. How, how, is this thing, how is this dissonance playing out with the leadership, with the current leadership, for whatever it is left of it? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I try not to pay attention to the news because, I, you know, I think as I was mentioned earlier to, to, before we started the show that I, I, I just assume that everyone is lying all the time. And I think that that's mostly right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't really think that I actually know what's happening. Uh, I, you know, who knows? Trump could be back channeling with all the people on the left the entire time and they could be playing a little game with us. You know, I, I really don't know. I don't know how sincere he is. Um, uh, I do think that he, you know, was elected uh, by, you know, or allowed to be elected uh, to please a large swath of the population who is frustrated at being told what to say and, and being forced to lie and uh, being forced to say you know, things that they don't believe. And, uh, and I think that he was elected really about really for that, not for uh, any of his policies or anything. I think he was just seen as a force of anti-political correctness and he, he's a troll. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people liked, they wanted someone to make fun of the far left and make fun of the media and expose kind of all their lies. And, and he does a good job of that uh, because he, you know, he calls everybody fake news and it is all fake news. They make stuff. I've, I've had enough things written about me to know that they really copy and paste old news And then add like one sentence and they make their new news. You know, they just, they're just lazy people doing crappy work. You know, uh, so I mean, that's, that's the media. So I mean, it's, uh, it, and that happens to me all the time. So I, I can only imagine like someone at Trump's level, you just must read, you must read stuff and be like, <laughs> fuck these guys. You know, <laughs> so. Now, interestingly, however, is that you're successful with what you write uh, and your blog as well. Um, other people like Milo Yiannopoulos is um, number one in, on Amazon in the, the, with this book that is coming out. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, so there seem to be um, the revolt in a way, in a very small and mild way of people who at least want to seek 
other point of views and not the ones that they are fed. And, and it's not surprising, and perhaps you can tell us what you think about this. Um, now the, the, the censorship is not from the government or the state. It comes from the, 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 the companies, from the platforms like YouTube and Google and, and the Twitters that try to, or Facebook, that try to, to censorship, uh, to put censorship on people. And this is, uh, this is quite, um, it's quite unique that the private business is doing the job of the state. Oh, absolutely. And I've been saying that for years. I've said it in a couple of speeches, actually. I mean, that the, it, and, and it's amazing because the left is supposed to be anti-corporate, but the, the corporations actually do all the work of the left. Uh, and it's because, you know, the globalist mindset, I've wrote, written about a lot about this in, in Becoming a Barbarian. Uh, the globalist mindset is, is a consumer mindset. It's, a, you know, how to reach the most customers. So, of course, you're going to try to not offend anyone and appeal to everyone possible. And uh, if anyone says something that would offend someone, you shut them down because they're hurting your bottom line. And that's all that corporations do. They're not ideological. They don't care about anything. They're, you know, they're run by shareholders. You know, like they run, they have to turn a profit. That's their job. And so they're going to do anything that they possibly can to turn a profit. And that serves the goals of globalism and the left and whatever. So it's kind of ridiculous. That's why all these little protests and everything, they're such a farce. It's like, it's like... Giant corporations are on your side already. You know, <laughs> you know that's the, the, it, the fact that you think that you were, uh, you're standing up against corporations. Like corporations are the ones imposing diversity policies on everyone. Of course. Now, however, as we as we also discussed before, all these movements, um, whether it's from the corporate world or the state or uh, young clueless people, uh, idealistic maybe, but uh, clueless nonetheless. Um, is contributing to bring what you and I write about, which is a collapse of the whole thing. Um, it's not uh, obviously, and for more and more people, it's obvious, not sustainable anymore. And the window of the potentiality for it to continue get, it gets smaller and, and smaller. So your message about uh, building your own tribe, or at least um, setting up yourself with the values that fit any tribe that... Um, will exist at some point, um, becomes even more relevant. you have good feedback on, on that on your side? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean obviously, a lot of, there are a lot of people think, who think uh, what uh, I'm doing is escapist. Uh, but I really think that, you know, if you're going to... I don't think you can recover tribal things from the past. I don't, I don't think that you can bring back the past. You never can. Uh, you know, you can't bring back old Europe. You can't bring back... Uh, traditional values as they were 200 years ago. No, none of that can ever happen. Um, so we're at a place where, you know, the slate is wiped clean. So why don't you just make the world that you want? And, uh, you know, set up the life that you want as best you can right now. And, uh, you know, don't worry about, you know, all these, you know, all these big problems that you actually can't control. And, uh, you know, start actually, you know, setting an example and putting, uh, you know, creating culture rather than just commenting on it and criticizing it. Because people, uh, people do that all the time and it really doesn't, you know, that's why your culture is dead because all you do is criticize. You know, it's like you need creative people and you need to, to, to actually uh, set an example that people can follow and that can inspire people. And uh, so that's what, that's what I'm trying to do now. I mean, I don't write as much as I, I used to. And, uh, you know, I'm just out, you know, it's like, if I, if I was going to build a religion, what religion would it be? Like, how would, you know, and, and, you know, fortunately I found some like-minded people to hang out with and, uh, you know, who share a lot of my values. And, uh, you know, we just, it's really exciting. You know, it's exciting to be, be creative and to, to build something from scratch and, and to work on it. And that's a lot more uh, gratifying to me than to sit around and complain all the time. So you you mentioned at the beginning that you are you just bought some land. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 what we're doing right now. Is uh, for our our tribe that I have they have out here. I bought some land, um, and uh, you know we've been building uh, different structures, and you know it's it's kind of a place. It's kind of inspired. You called it Vol Volgang, uh, inspired by uh, uh, Ernst Jünger mm -hmm. and uh, his idea of kind of the forest passage and this yes. uh, spiritual place that is an escape from modern society. And uh, in, his, in his work, the spiritual place is actually just inside you. But I actually wanted to construct something in real life, uh, you know. And uh, so that's, 
it's kind of my spiritual place right now. I, I hate it when I don't go because it's like it's it's a, a ways away from my house, so I have to drive out there for a while to get there. And like yesterday, I really didn't have time to do that much out there, but I still drove the whole way out there just to hang out there and do a little work on my cabin, and then uh, come home because that's what's important to me, and it's, it's it kind of keeps me centered. Yeah, excellent. Well, definitely the Ernest Junger, uh, we we both appreciate this author, and definitely the the um, the, the German title of the book you just mentioned is. Waldvogel? No. The the Way of the Forest is translated yeah. in French. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's an excellent book. It's written, what, in 1950-something? Something like that, yeah. yeah. It was after the war. Just after the war, and he foresaw as well that... Uh, he foresaw the, the sort of dictatorship we would live in, and it's amazing that he saw that after the war, uh, yeah. after the and real also, dictatorship. And also, there's some great quotes in there about needing to check the news... There's a great quote in there about needing to check the news. It's like a sign of neurosis, like that they enforce on you, so that you know you can they can know where you're at 24/7. You know, like you, you know, you have to be involved in the news all the time. And that's and, before uh, the internet. Yeah, and that was and that was obviously way before the internet, or even like a lot of television. You know, yeah. I mean, they all had limited television, and now it's like, I mean, the you know people can't go five minutes without checking their phones. I mean, I check my phone all the time, but that's my work. Uh, you know, I, I, I have an Instagram. That's kind of my favorite media platform is Instagram because I, I like, I mean, I'm an artist kind of by nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, to put up, you know, we have uh, you know, a cool photographer that we're working with and and uh, Peter Best. And, uh, you know, we to put out some in images that inspire people is, is yes. very exciting to me. They're very nice. Like, now, perhaps to, to, to finish, for, for people in France or in, that have read the, the Way of Men in French, what will they find in um, A Sky Without Eagle uh, to, to go further? Uh, to go further from The Way of Men, um, I, I think, you know, people always ask, well, what, you know, with, with The Way of Men, like, what kind of society would you create if you could? And I did, like I said, I wrote an essay in there about, uh, uh, you know, called The Brotherhood. Yes. Um, and that's kind of, you know, been my model. I should probably go back and read it. I haven't read it in a while. Uh, make sure it's still what I want. But, uh <laughs> Uh, you know, I am, uh, you know, that's, that's something that's different. And, and obviously I think the, the idea of the barbarian that I developed in, uh, uh, sky without Eagles then kind of set the stage for becoming a barbarian and the next book. Uh, so it's a, it's a good bridge, um, from the way of men to becoming a barbarian, uh, which I think they're also publishing in French. Uh, at I, some point. I sure hope so. Uh, and tell us, tell us about the one you're you're working on. I know it's you may you may say I know I don't want to talk about it, but what's what's it going to be about? Um, it's basically uh, yeah a lot of what we've been talking about, really. Um, you know, if you the thing is if you, if you if you believe in strength and you, if you want to be, and I, I don't think I don't like arguments that say that uh, like evolutionary arguments that we have to be this way. Mm. But people are all kinds of ways. You know, you don't have to be, I mean, obviously we, it's better for us a lot of times, like the men feel better, I think. And that's always the argument I've made is that we're missing something in our lives. Like the way that my dog, if he doesn't go for a walk, he's sad. Um, if we don't get to do certain things, you know, we're not as fulfilled as men. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, you know, if you just choose that, uh, you're going to follow a path of strength and you're going to, you know, look at the, you know, the four tactical virtues that I talk about in the way of men as as you know guidelines for how you want to live your life um you're put in a position that we've been talking about is that uh, those values actually aren't appreciated or wanted in modern society and so that you can easily fall into a trap of resentment you know this idea that uh, you know like the whole world is upside down and it's not fair and you can get mad at it and, and i think that a lot of the protest movements and stuff like that that come from the right are, are guided by resentment Mm -hmm. In the sense that they're just mad that things aren't the way they think they should be, but the world never is the way you think it should be, um, and and you just have to kind of do your best uh, within it. And I think uh, the jump that I'm making from there is, you know, to to, to not be mad all the time, uh, to not be angry that the world isn't the way that you want it to be. Uh, you need to create, you know, take the path of creation rather than the path of of being just angry all the time. Of the the and, frustration. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a, creation is kind of the, the the end goal that I'm kind of putting forward now. It's like you know, if you if you don't like the way the world is, create something. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's good to identify problems and to look at the world realistically, but uh, you need to 
do something eventually with your life, you know, aside from like complain about things that you can't control, you know. I agree. And it's much more efficient than uh, going to uh, protestation in the streets. Yeah, 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 yeah. You probably won't get maced either. You know? I mean, you might, you might. But, uh, you might, but, <laughs> but not, not, uh, not, uh, not uh, proactively. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing. With these protests and, and all that, I don't think they actually accomplish anything. They just, I feel like they're, they're play actors acting out a role for the government that's going to do what it wants anyway. Yeah, uh, for sure. So, I mean, I think it's, they're just, it's, it's very cathartic what they're doing. People who want power and, and people who want to be in charge, they should wait till the whole system falls down and take, and then take charge of the ruins. Yeah, but and taking the people at the protests who are capable of doing that. No, That's but today... I, mean, I know guys who are, and they're just waiting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? So Exactly. And, uh, well, anyway, I, I look forward to reading your book in French, uh, and, uh, and certainly I look forward to, to, to your new one when, it, when it's coming out. And um, if you ever drop by in Europe uh, next time, I know that, that your, your book is doing well in Germany as well. Um, yeah. Let us know and we'll organize some, uh, some, something in, in France while France still exists. <laughs> well, hopefully it still exists. <laughs> I would like to see it. I haven't been to France yet. We must organize that. All right. Have a great day. Take care. Right, thank you very much.